Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a group meetup scheduling tool called Rally. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So as I find a lot of projects and video topics to make, uh, I, I found this on Reddit and it, would, it actually posted just a few days ago. And if we actually head over to that post, uh, basically it says this is an open source doodle poll alternative. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with doodle. I'd never heard of doodle until I found uh, until I found Rally, but uh, basically the idea is that uh, you can uh, create a poll basically uh, and set up options for when might be a good time or or a selection of good times to to have a group get together. And then you can send that link to people and they can you know check the boxes that, that fit best for them, whether it's specific days or specific timeframes within specific days. Uh, we're gonna get into all of that kind of stuff here in just a moment, but that's that's kind of the, the idea behind Rally is, is whoever creates the poll or the the event uh, can then set up certain days and times within those days um, and then send that to people. They can check the box and say when they're available, put their name in there so everybody knows kind of who's available when. Great idea, absolutely love it, especially with, with the warmer weather coming and more people wanting to go out hiking and camping and those sorts of things. I think this is a great option to, to be able to kind of have an online collaboration spot for people to, to figure out when an event is possible. So if we take a look over here at the Reddit post, um, basically the XO wire here said, hey, open source, uh, Docker, definitely do Docker. Uh, the developer responded with fair point. Um, do, 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 they've avoided it. Nope, that's 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 that has to do with images. Never mind. They do plan on publishing an image on Docker Hub. They're just trying to get on a proper release cycle before they commit to that. However, we are going to still install this in Docker. Uh, we're just going to uh, we're going to uh, copy the GitHub repository onto our server and deploy it that way. Uh, of course, we're going to walk through that step by step uh, during this video. But I just wanted to give an idea of what's what to expect with this setup. It's still early development. Um, there, it's still actively being developed. Um, I'm sure more features and functions and that sort of thing will be developed into this, but uh, I wanted to share it with you so that you can kind of get in early and kind of watch the progress or even possibly contribute to the progress, uh, pro yeah, the progress uh, of this project if you're interested in doing that. So everything you'll need will be uh, linked in the description down below. So definitely check that out. Um, but with all that said, let's, uh, let's kind of take a look at how this works and then we'll take a look at getting it installed. Okay, so this is Rally. This is actually set up and hosted on my local server right over here next to me. Um, and this is this is the homepage for that. And here we can see that it's got a great amount of information here. Um, and you can either click on view the demo, uh, which is actually built in as well, um, or uh, we can come back over here and click on get started. And here we can see this is step one for creating our new poll, our new event, whatever you wanna call it here. Uh, we're gonna call this a uh, house party. Uh, and then the location will be uh, your mom's house. Uh, let's meet at your mom's house, right? So once we've got all of this information, of course, you can be more serious than that if you'd like. Uh, click continue. And then we can select days that we might want to have this event. Um, and, and we could just set it as individual days, one day, three days, five days, whatever. Or uh, we can uh, add an additional layer of complexity to this and add time options to this. Oops, let's let's go to like there and there. We'll just we'll just set up some random times here, uh, just so we can kind of see. Uh, that's fine. Let's add one more. Oops, there we go. Um, okay, so here we are. We've got uh, we've got this. All of our times and our dates selected for this event. Uh, next, we'll click on continue. Then we're going to enter our name and our email address and click on create poll. <clears throat> Okay, so now we've got this interface here. Now, the first thing that I would do as the as the administrator of this event, um, just as a, a quick, hey, don't forget to do this, come up here, 
and check that or, or click that. Oh, you need to verify your email first. So that that's something to keep in mind. Cool. So let's check this email out. So right here is the email that I just received uh, zero minutes ago. Uh, you can you can click here. Uh, you can click here and or you can uh, use that in case you forget it later. So let's just click the link. This is why you'll need to have SMTP set up for your server. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, so now we now that we've verified that we can turn notifications on. So anytime uh, there's activity on this, uh, you as the administrator should get an email. So let's let's test that. So uh, what I want to do um, is is click on share. I want to share this uh, to a participant, my friends, my family, whoever I might want to invite to this event. I'm going to click on copy, and then I'm going to open this in a new 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 thing here. And uh, basically. Um, What's kind of cool about this, we'll start up here at the top. We can see the location. Uh, we can say, see the, the name, uh, the, the, all of that stuff is all up there. When it was created, who it was created by. Um, and then let's say, this is, let's say this is a virtual event and you're gonna be in a different time zone when it happens. Well, um, we can see here like Tuesday, the 26th from 12 to 1230. Uh, let's say I'm in a different time zone. Uh, well, now it has changed that automatically. So I don't have to think about when I need to be there. I don't have to do the math. It does it for me. Uh, so we're going to say ignore time zone. There we go. So uh, let's say um, let's say my name is Nate and I can meet at 12 to 1230 on the 26th, 9, 30 to 1030 on the 28th and 215 to 315. Those are the slot or the, the time slots I have available. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click save. Just like so also as an administrator, uh, it automatically updated my page in real time here. So I didn't have to refresh or do any of that. It just automatically updated. And I got an email uh, about that saying, Nate has voted on your poll and I can go there. And of course it'll bring me right back to here. Um, also, let's say, let's say Nate had something to say about this. Oops, I'm gonna say, um, I'm, and click send. All right, so now, Let's, for the sake of this, let's open a new, new window. Let's uh, just open this Firefox. I'm gonna bring this up just so we can, again, get a bit of a demonstration here. We're gonna open that up. Um, and here we can see that uh, Nate uh, is looking forward to this. We can see uh, when Nate's times and uh, our, our times and dates when he's available. I, I don't, I, I, so, so from a development standpoint here, I should not be able to edit Nate's availability. That's, that's something that I hope that gets fixed. I don't know if you set that via a cookie or an email address or whatever the case is, um, but but I, as this new participant, shouldn't be able to edit Nate's, uh, his availability. Uh, so hopefully uh, the developer will see this and, and figure out some way to adjust that. But just one of those things, again, this is still early development. So uh, I'm going to click on cancel and I'm going to, um, I'm gonna say I'm a new participant um, and I'm gonna put in my name um, and I'm gonna say, uh, let's just do that. And I can meet uh, the 26th at 1.30, uh, the 28th at 9.30, or the 30th at, at 10.30 and click save. So the reason this is taking a moment is because it is uh, in the process, it's also sending an email in the background. So that's just kind of one of those, uh, one of those things. So anyway, that's that. Um, but yeah, so especially now that I have put in mine, it should recognize that I'm not Nate, so I shouldn't be able to edit Nate anyway. Hopefully that'll get fixed. And then of course um, I can say uh, me too and click send. And there we go. Uh, now we've got a kind of a running conversation here. Uh, so I really, really dig that. And of course, all the while that this is going on, uh, I can minimize all of this. And if I come back over here, we can see that I've got new messages um, saying that, that Berg has voted and Nate has voted. Uh, there's new comments here uh, saying uh, both Berg and Nate have left comments on the poll. So uh, anyway, super intuitive. There's just a couple little permissions things that I'd like to see get fixed. So uh, with all of that, uh, if you're still interested in this and you'd like to see how to, to, to get this installed in Docker, uh, let's jump over and take a look at my terminal to get this process started. Okay, so here we are. We've got my my screen split so that I've got GitHub on one side and my terminal on the other. I am logged into my Open Media Vault six setup again. That shouldn't matter because we're doing this all in in uh, in SSH CLI whatever. Um, and and because of that, we're just we're directly interfacing with Docker, um, not with uh, not with Open Media Vault. So 
should work on five or six if you're using Open Media Vault for this. So the first thing we want to do is come over to here and click on, uh, or we want to uh, get clone and then their, their, uh, their URL there. So we're going to right click on that and hit enter. Now, if you don't have Git installed, um, it will tell you that, hey, Git isn't installed. And with that, you should be able to do sudo apt install Git uh, and then just click yes and it should install. And then you can run that command. So here we've got um, their, their, their GitHub repository clone. So we're going to do CD into uh, rally like so and do an LS. Now, this is uh, what we're seeing up here. We've just copied all of this information over to our server. Now, uh, the next thing it says down here uh, is that we will need um, to uh, to have an env file in order to support the, um, the SMTP stuff here. Now, when I originally tried to deploy this, or let me rephrase that, when I originally deployed this, I used the env file. Uh, I put in all of my relevant uh, SMTP information for that. And with my SMTP information in the env file, it wouldn't work. It just kept telling me that my information was incorrect. So uh, if you run into that, there is a way around that. And what we can do um, is, is actually put those environmental variables in our docker compose.yml file. Um, the way the developer intends you to do it, and really the way you should do it with the env file would be this, right? So we've got this sample.env file right there. So what we would do is a cp sample.env to .env like so, and then we could do nano.env like there. And here we are, this is all of uh, the information that you would need to fill out for uh, for your SMTP server. Now, um, like it says up here, Postgres database not needed if you're running this with Docker Compose because we're actually doing the connection in the Docker Compose and we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show you this. This is what the env file looks like. So, um, so it might just be something to keep in mind there. Uh, we're actually not going to use the env file for the simplicity or to keep this setup simple. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, control X and we're gonna do nano, um, to do uh, docker compose.yml like so. <clears throat> so let's let's take a look at this so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on here. Um, actually, I wanna bring this down. Let's minimize this. Let's bring you to the middle and then let's zoom in. Okay, so here we are, we've got version 3.3. Our service, uh, our first service listed here is our rally database. Uh, our image will be a Postgres database uh, version 14.2. Restart will be always, um, so basically if you have to reboot your Docker server, this will automatically come back up. Um, our, our volume for that will be db-data uh, for the volume there, and then uh, it will map to this location inside the database container. Uh, we've got an environment of Postgres password is Postgres. Uh, you should probably change that just for security purposes, but uh, if you change it down there, make sure to change it uh, right there as well. Um, and then you should be good to go. Uh, below that, we've got our rally, uh, service. Uh, we're going to build this service. We're going to build this Docker Compose uh, set up here. Uh, and the context is use this root folder. Our arguments are, hey, use this database URL. That's what that's for. Uh, again, restart always. We've got a command here uh, saying that, hey, we need to make sure that these uh, are available. Uh, so if, if it's not on the system, deploy them um, and then start yarn. Uh, this depends on the rally database. Basically, what that means is uh, the, the rally container, the app container won't start or try to do anything until it's able to, to figure out that the database is up and running first. Uh, in these situations, you always want to do it depends on just to make sure that the database is up so that uh, the app isn't kind of spinning its gears waiting for something. Uh, below that, we've got some ports. Uh, let's, um, there's a good chance that maybe we've already got something on port 3000. Um, I don't, but if you need to change port 3000 to something else, uh, change, um, change, like this, this area right here, don't change this side. That that colon 3000 uh, is for the inside of the container. So just leave that alone. Uh, I am gonna change this back to 3000 because I know that there's nothing on there that I need. So our environment uh, right now is just a uh, database URL. Um, again, if you change the password up here, uh, be sure to change it uh, down here as well. And then below that, we've got an environmental variable or an env file. Uh, and this is actually, we're gonna take this out. We're gonna do control K and control K like so. And then what we can do is um, put in all of the information that we need from here and just paste that in there. Uh, and then, then of course, there will be a little bit of, uh, of, of, of formatting here. So that's basically it. You would fill in your SMTP host, your support email, basically who the email is from, uh, the SMTP port for your setup, uh, SMTP secure, true or false, 
uh, your SMTP username and your SMTP password. Uh, once you fill all of that in, you can press Control O and Enter and Control X to save and exit the Docker Compose file. Okay, so now that we've edited our Docker Compose file, the next thing we wanna do is uh, docker com compose space up space dash D. Uh, the dash D is to run it detached, meaning uh, if we didn't run dash D, it would run all of this in the terminal. And then if we were to shut the, this terminal screen down, uh, the, the the container would also shut down. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't work without this terminal being up. So we run it detached from the terminal. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so that happened differently on my system than it happened on your system. I, I thought I had fixed that. Basically, uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull all of the resources that it needs uh, on your first deployment, and then uh, it's going to build everything that it needs to build and deploy everything it needs to deploy. Uh, this will actually take several minutes, uh, probably the first time you deploy this. Um, so so just be aware of that. Uh, I, I did a, a, a Docker system prune, and I thought that would have fixed it. I was wrong, and I was hoping to actually kind of show that whole process process there and I missed it. I apologize for that. But uh, that is, uh, that's basically it. So now uh, your next step, of course, would be to uh, to go to your reverse proxy and get a, a domain and an SSL set up on this. I've got videos about that. I will uh, link to those in the description down below so you can uh, know how to do those things. Um, but basically at that point now, now that we've got that set up, we can again go to uh, rally.dbtech. Uh, Com. So here we are, we're back on our screen. And of course we can uh, click on get started and start setting up events. Uh, we can we can send this to friends and family and let them use it if you wanted to do that. Or if you wanted to, you could put this maybe behind Othelia and only let certain people have access to this if you wanted to do that as well. There's lots of different options on how you can do this. And that's one of the things that I really love about self hosting is that you've got so many options on how you can set things up that uh, that I just, I love this hobby and I hope you do as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of content, of course, there is a subscribe button down there as well. Uh, there are all kinds of different ways uh, in the description uh, where you'll find links to everything. There are different ways down there that you can support the channel if you wanna do that. So I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I do wanna say thank you for spending part of your day with me today and I will talk to you guys in the next video.